folks, Jason Webster here. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. Hey, today we're going to talk about high management soybeans at the PTI farm. You know, this year it was interesting looking at some of our protocols that we put together for high yielding soybeans. And you know that soybeans were my number one moneymaker at the farm this past year. We keep track of ROI, return on investment, of all the things that we're testing at the farm. And our high management soybeans actually came in at number one at a return of $292 per acre. And, you know, I look at this and, and, and I, I say I would probably take some corn after corn out of the rotation if I could continue to make this amount of money on soybeans. This is attractive to me. And I love the cash flow of soybeans. I like that I don't have to buy things like nitrogen for the crop. It's just easier cash flow. But these are impressive numbers. And, it, you know, at the PTI farm, we're scratching our heads saying, how do we unlock this? How do we get this on more acres on the farm? I do think farmers feel like they're kind of stuck with their soybeans. We actually surveyed growers on our PTI farm winter tour this past January, February, and March, and 55% of growers, this is over 1,000 growers that answered this survey question, 55% of them said, yeah, they feel like they're tired of, of growing 50 to 60 bushel soybeans. They feel like they're just in this bubble and kind of stuck. Only 24% of the growers said they really felt good about their bean yields. 10% said they didn't even want to grow soybeans at all. They were going to plant another crop, and 12% were undecided. And this, to me, is pretty concerning. I asked growers then, what's the highest yield of beans you've ever raised? 6% said 100 bushel or more, 14% 90 to 99. And then we get this big group, two-thirds of the group actually in the range of 70 to 89 bushel beans. Lastly, 16% at 60 to 69 bushel. Row width is interesting. I've had more farmers ask me, hey, can we grow 100 bushel soybeans in 30 inch rows? And we surveyed the folks and said, okay, well, row width are you in? Look at this, 41% of growers are saying, at least the ones we talked to, are said they're in 30 inch rows, while 15 inch rows are at 36%. Uh, it was an overwhelming question this winter, you know, can we, can we grow 100 bushel beans in 30 inch rows? And I think we're getting this question because so many farmers are making the perfect corn planter. It's all decked out with all the precision technology and that planter will plant corn and give you a perfect stand. And I think farmers are taking that same 30 inch row planter and using it to plant soybeans and it's working pretty well. Starter fertilizer, how many growers are putting starter fertilizer on for soybeans? This one I'm really confused on. 74% of our, um, the, the folks answering the survey question said they're not putting starter on for soybeans, while 26% are. This is interesting to me because if you ask them the same question on corn, this number gets inverted. We're running about 80-20. 80% 20. 80 of, of growers say they do put fertilizer on for corn, 20% no. But I guess if you're going to put it on for corn, why aren't you putting it on for soybeans? We asked, do you implement a foliar nutrition or an insect, you know, um, a fungicide insecticide program on your beans? 8% said, nah, it generally doesn't pay on my farm. 22% I'm going to scout and if I need it, I'll do it. And then 71% said, yes, it's absolutely part of my program, which I think this is interesting as well because 55% of growers say they're kind of stuck with their, their soybean yields, yet they're doing this type of management program. Our management program is this. We are strip till. Uh, I love our strip till at the farm. It can do an excellent job for us. It's not conventional tillage, but yet it's not no-till. And it gives me the, the, the benefit of banding fertilizer. We are banding 1846 ODAP and 0060 potash um, for our soybeans, and it's worked out really well for us. We are irrigating our soybeans. This past year, I put on five inches of water through our Netafim drip tape, and I ran two fungicide applications on all the beans, all the treatments on this data set I'm going to share with you in our high-yield Program. We used Miravis Neo at R1 and we came back in at R3 with another shot of Trivapro. Now, band versus broadcast. I mentioned that we're banding fertilizer. Now, no matter if you're banding fertilizer or broadcast applying fertilizer, we like to look at a reallocation program where we reduce the amount of dry fertilizer in the fall so we can come in on our planter with a liquid nutrition program. Now, if I put all my fertilizer with dry on in the fall, and then come back on the planter and put more fertilizer on. If I don't reallocate it, I, I end up putting too much fertilizer on, and then I'm overspending. I'm overapplying and overspending. So we don't want to do it, so we just back our dry rates down to compensate for the liquid program we're going to put on our planter. And for me, it's banding all the way. Okay, Banding starting out in my fall strips and then banding again on, on, on the planter. 
Look at band versus broadcast. We put you know the banding and our strip till right next to our conventional broadcast spreading. Okay, and it's about a ten dollar winner for us. Now this has the additional cost of strip tilling built into this. We all know that if we're going to strip till, it's going to be a lot more expensive than just calling your ag retailer say come out with that spreader and just spin on a bunch of fertilizer. The costs are all built into this, and it is a ten dollar winner. At least it was in two thousand twenty two. Uh, banding over broadcast. That was at 100% rate. Now let's go to efficiency rate testing where we're looking at rates of fertilizer at 100% and then reducing the rate by 25% all the way down to zero. So now I've got 100% rates, 75% rates, 50% rates, 25% rates, and zero. And with all the different rates we put on banding this past year in 2022 in soybeans, banding beat the broadcast application at every rate, every single rate. Irrigation. I mentioned that I'm irrigating beans. I tell you, I've had some of the most consistent yield results from irrigating soybeans. This is the past four years at the PTI farm. About a 23 to 24 bushel yield increase from irrigating soybeans. It's been incredible. We're taking the noise out of some of our data sets and, and getting some nice data in. But the irrigating soybeans has, has been very, very good for us at the PTI farm. Look at the Netafim drip. Now, this is a situation where it's on top of the ground, where we're supplying water and nutrition to soybeans. But look at the root system of this soybean plant. This is not a tap root like most farmers would say a soybean root is. This is a big fibrous root system. And you know what? This was on 30-inch rows, and we, we dug a little bit. You could go on 30-inch rows, find the center, and just dig about an inch and a half down, and you'd see roots all the way across the row. That is not a tap root. And we're getting this major explosion here. We're getting this explosion of root activity. There's some biological activity here too, but we're setting the stage up for this big fibrous root system to help drive a shield. But we're getting this because we're putting the nutrition and water at the mouth of a soybean plant and we get this big explosion. One of the biggest reasons I think for, for driving soybean yields here at the farm. Here are our yields from 2022. Now, our record yield at the PTI farm came a couple years ago where we hit 110.7, 110 bushel soybeans. I didn't get it this year. I was lucky to break 100, but um, I had 300 bushel um, uh, yields. Just couldn't, couldn't get much. I knew this summer, I just didn't really feel confident. I thought maybe I'd put on a little too much water. It's one of the things I got to get better at. You know, when we go under drought conditions, it's easy for me to go to the pump house and hit the button or flip the switch to turn the pump on and give it water. But I got to be smart enough to know when to turn it off. I don't have enough water here at the farm, and I know every time I run it, it's going to cost me money. And you also know what they say, beans don't like wet feet. So I got to do a little bit better job here managing these soybeans with water. That may be part of it here, um, but, but we're going to do better with that. Now look at this, this, this is more of a tap root. Most, most farmers would say, oh yeah, that's a typical soybean root, well, more of a tap root design. But look at the lateral roots. I really like this lateral root. When I dug this soybean up and looked at it, I said, hey, wait a minute, these, these lateral roots that are going side to side, this is how we can feed them. You know, the lateral root there on the left, it actually goes all the way across past the 30 inch row. Just incredible. And so I, I looked at this and I said, wait a minute, I'm going to strip till, I'm going to put a shot of fertilizer on in the fall with my strips, but then I'm going to come in on the planter and I want to access these lateral roots to continue to feed these soybeans. We're doing it with Conceal. This has been a great soybean fertilizer attachment for us on the planter. We're coming in with dual band placement of soybean nutritional products and these soybeans just absolutely love it. This placement is three inches away on each side of where we're putting soybeans in the trench. It's safe, but boy, these soybeans love it. Why do I say it? Look at these soybeans on the right, these taller, greener soybeans taking up that dual band conceal application of nutrition and they come up out of the ground and it's their hair on fire growing as fast as they can. Why is that a good thing? Because I want them to flower as fast as possible. We want to be flowering by summer solstice, the longest daylight period of the year, right? You know, this past year, I missed Memorial Day. So it means flowering on Memorial Day by two days. But again, I got to get them out of the ground fast, feed these things so they get the flowering as fast as possible to drive yield. The soybeans on the left of the, screen, of the, of the slide right now, that's just a typical DAP potash program and it's not cutting it. This is what we've done for the last 50 or 60 years. And in my opinion, it's time to change because there's better ways to help drive yield on these soybeans. 
How about trifoliate size? I want leaves the size of my head. Why? Because that's my, that's my factory for sunlight, driving in that sunlight into the plant. The top leaves, the top, top trifoliates on the screen are from my high management program. Look at the leaf, leaflet size versus the ones on the bottom. The three on the bottom are simply just a DAP and potash program. Look what we're doing to the size of these leaves and, and building more of a factory to bring this, this sunlight into, into the soybean plant. All right, I'm going to run you through a few programs. I'm not going to go through all the individual products. You can read them on the screen, but I'm just going to show you how we set these, these high-yield beans up. I come in in the fall, strip till, reallocate, drop my drap, uh, DAP and potash to put on these liquid programs. The first one from AgriLiquid. AgriLiquid's got three products that they're putting in a three-way or a tri-band, FurrowJet, and then we come in at V4 with a shot of boron, R1 and R3, fungicide and nutrition programs. All right, now look at the results. The orange bar on the graph is my check or my control, my status quo. This is how we've been fertilizing soybeans for the last 50, 60 years with just DAP and potash. I reallocate, lower the DAP and potash to go to liquid nutrition on the planter. And look at this, I get a four bushel yield increase, but I'm making 65 bucks an acre by doing it. Those are some good numbers there. We go on the foliar side, you know, we add it, you know, add that to the planter program. Now I'm getting a 10.3 bushel yield response and look at that ROI driving it to $90 an acre. What can you do on your farm to make an extra $90 an acre? This is one right here. Let's go to nature. So this was set up a little bit differently. Still got my same strip till, I reallocate the dry, but then I've got three tanks and three pumps on the planter where I can go dual band conceal, which we talked about earlier. You can see the products nature is putting in here. I've got another tank and pump. I'm going furrow jet center. So this is on the seed in between the seed. And then another, lastly, a third tank and pump to go in furrow jet wings. Okay, that's my planting um, uh, uh, product. Then I come in on the foliar side. Okay, you see those listed on the screen. Let's look at the results of this. Again, look at that. That's a nine and a half bushel yield increase by putting these products on the planter with conceal and furrow jet. And it's a $50 an acre winner. We say that a lot at the PTI farm. What can you do to make an extra 50 or $100 an acre? This is a $50 winner. We add the foliar program and look at the yield. Now we're taking soybean yields, 87 and a half bushel to the acre, up past the century mark at 101 bushel to the acre. This was in fact our highest soybean yield in our high management program this year at 101. Marco fertilizer, it's interesting how, you know, we're using different strategies, different products at different timings and looking at the overall cost of these programs, because ROI obviously is factored into this. This is Marco fertilizer. Again, it got some nice yield increases from the planter, and then we add the foliar to it. Look at that, 11.2 bushel gains and over $70 net profit on this. Some tremendous returns. Store USA, we've been using this company for PGRs or plant growth regulators. We've been using them more foliar though. And I said, wait a minute, we've got things like FurrowJet where we can soil engage them now, ban them with the planter. And we've been seeing some nice results. Look at last year, a 3.7 bushel winner, a $62 net ROI winner. And then we add the foliar to it. We drive yields to 12 and a half bushel increase and got some nice ROI there as well. That's a $4 increase over our at plant applications. So I really like some of the soil engaging PGRs that we're using from Stoller USA. You know, the, the overall net return of all the programs, you know, I didn't, didn't list them all to you today, but these, these are all of them. All of them made me money on a per acre basis. Obviously some more than others, but I get this question a lot is Jason, okay, you're trying to grow high yielding soybeans, but are you making any more money than me growing 50 or 60 bushel soybeans in a lower management program? My answer to that question is yes, we are making money. You can see these numbers right here. AgroLiquid was the highest at that $90 an acre range. But I think this is an easy program. Now, the only thing I'd like to add to it is conceal. I've got the conceal tank and pump. I wanna add that program to this to help drive yield a little higher. But this was a pretty simple program in our high management program this year. What about soybean size, seed size? You, when you harvest beans, you want big beans or do you want little beans? I think we'd all agree that we want big beans, but how do you get them? These beans you see on the screen are my 110 bushel soybeans we had a couple years ago. And they were some of the biggest soybeans I think I've ever seen. We weighed them, we put them through a seed counter and we found that year on the highest bean that I've raised here on the farm, they were 2,002 seeds per pound. I've never seen beans that large. Just goes to show you that 
high yielding beans, most of the time they're going to be a larger soybean. And we want that to help drive yield. That will definitely help versus a smaller seed size. Here's my numbers this year. I, I just really couldn't get the big numbers. We were running about 2,300 seeds per pound versus that, you know, 2,084 we averaged back in 2020 where we had that 110 bushel yield. But I just I couldn't get it this year. And test weights are something that I haven't quite figured out. I feel frustrated by it. You know, we take a load of semi, uh, we take a load of beans in and a semi loaded into our grain terminal. They weigh us. They take the total weight and divide it by 60 because there's 60 pounds in a bushel, or at least that's what they say. But yet I go dump that load of beans, I come back and weigh, I grab my, my ticket that they give me, and it never says 60.0. Most of the time it says 57 or 58, and I don't quite understand this. Corn, if I use the same semi and trailer with a load of corn, we get graded at 56 pounds, but when they print the ticket off, a lot of times I'm 58, 59, 60 pounds. Now why is it that soybeans, I can't get them to 60 pounds, when I'm graded at 60 pounds, I don't understand it. I wish somebody would explain this one to me, but I'm kind of confused by it. I, I know it's probably due to the volumetric tube that we're putting the beans in, but, but again, I mentioned corn. We get this higher test weight in corn typically, but we can't get it in soybeans, and I wish someone would, would, would tell me why that is. Today's Inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, yes, I do believe we can raise higher yielding soybeans. I think we've got to flex a little bit, though. We've got to do a better job with our fertility program. One of the biggest things I've learned in the 20-some years I've been doing on-farm research is you can't just hit a button, a magic button, and says, I'm going to do my fertility one time, and that's it, and, and expect highest overall yield potential. It doesn't work that way. So we're going to reallocate. We're going to, we're going to ban versus our broadcast applications. We're going to drop that rate of fertilizer so I can afford to put more fertilizer on the planter and continue banding that fertilizer. We've seen some really nice results with it. I do want to plant soybeans earlier. We didn't really talk about it in, in this, this episode very much, but uh, you know, I told you I'm on strip till, and I think strip till plays a, it's a major player when it comes to planting earlier. I'll make that fall strip. I try to make it 10 inches wide, and then March or April when we're trying to, you know, wanting to maybe plant soybeans early, when the sun comes out, it's gonna warm up that black strip, and a lot of times I can just sneak in there and plant those soybeans, compared to say like a no-till program where much colder soil is gonna take longer to heat it up, and sometimes I just can't get in there and early plant. Lastly, work with your seedsmen to plant the appropriate soybean genetics. You know, we're looking at where yield comes from on some of these soybean varieties. Some beans are more main stem. Some beans have the main stem plus lateral branching. Talk to your seedsmen and know how to plant these soybean varieties correctly on your farm, especially if you have soil variability. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Inside PTI. If you've got any questions of anything that we talked about here today, shoot me an email at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thank you so much watch